Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Patrick Harris. I'm the ASP National uh, Committee Secretary, and I'm here with uh, Zeb Bacelli, our uh, ASP Vice Chair, and he's here to introduce a, another very special guest that we're bringing to you. Uh, Zeb, take it away. Hey, Jeremy. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Welcome to the American Solidarity Party 2020 Convention. Thank you so much. For those who don't know, Jeremy McClellan is a comedian. He's got quite a large following on Twitter, which is where I found out about him. Also quite a large following in Pakistan, of all places. Yeah, there you go. Um, so while I was checking out some of your past material online, I saw that you had actually performed at the Libertarian Party National Convention. That's right, yeah. So 2016, you're with the Libertarians. 2020, you're with the ASP. That's in 2024, right. 2024, how fringe and tiny of a party <laughs> do you think you can get in front of? You know, the, the way things are going, I might, I might be performing with the, the Communist Party uh, <laughs> USA or the... Uh, the rent is too damn high, I think is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a throwback. Also, you know, g given my, my following in, in, in Pakistan, I think that um, the Prohibition Party might be oh, yeah. a, good, a, a good one, which I, I, was, I was trying to think of like other parties that I would, and I think that, and actually that's still going on, like there still is a Prohibition Party. And every, yeah. <laughs> every day their argument gets stronger and stronger. Sure. So. Did you actually used to be a libertarian? Is that what led you to that? I did. I did. I was, uh, I was a libertarian for, um, uh, for a few years. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, that was pre-Catholicism. Okay. And so, you know, I do know Catholics who are libertarians, but I, you know, I think that kind of knocked it out of me. Uh, and I had much thicker, um, uh, thicker questions about, about politics and uh, the common good than libertarians were willing to uh, to put up with. So I think that, um, but as far as, you know, <laughs> conventions, at that convention, that was the convention, the libertarian convention, where um, uh, somebody took off all their clothes uh, on, <laughs> on stage and danced around. And so I was thinking that the American Solidarity Party could have that, but just, but they would be putting clothes on. <laughs> you know, like getting more and more modest throughout the yeah. evening. Uh, and so that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to put a tie on later and then a hat and then just gradually become more and more clothed. Now, at a libertarian convention, does that kind of stun, get a big reaction? Or is that just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I think for him, people were just like, okay, that's, that's whatever. But, but the, yeah. there are, <laughs> it's funny because like at a libertarian convention, uh, there's a million different subgroups. Uh -huh. And... Um, like each one is like fringe and like, which I love. I love that. Uh, I, I love like fringe groups within groups. But what's, what was funny to me is that there's always like a group of libertarians who want to be serious, like who, who want like, to wrangle the other libertarians to be like, all right, guys, like, okay, we, yes, we want to legalize ser selling heroin to children, but uh, <laughs> can, can we please talk about tort reform? Everybody just calm down. Let's talk about torts. And that to me is the funniest thing in the world is just seeing these people who I think thought that the Libertarian Party like was just like, you know, some subgroup of, of, of Republicans and then they get yeah, there right. and it's totally not at all. But yeah. Yeah. So you're a comedian who's open about your perspectives on politics and faith. What do you think is the place of uh, politics for uh, a politics informed by Catholicism in America these days? You know, um, I think that uh, you, you, I think there's like there's plenty of place for it. I think that um, right now we're, we're living in an interesting time where you know the cards are on the table, and people are making actual substantive, if wrong, arguments and uh, stances, and people are just being open. You know, we're having the kind of naked public square that people talked about, uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago, and uh, but there's still like a, a large group of people who, I guess the elites who want uh, to talk about things or talk about politics in, in, a, in a more procedural sort of way. They, like, they always sound like umpires. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I, I always thought of like, you know, liberal debates tend to sound like, um, uh, or it's, it's like watching a baseball game played entirely by umpires. No one's actually <laughs> trying to win. No one's trying to win. Everyone is just like, that's an interesting argument, but this is also an interesting argument. It's like, yeah, but like, what do you believe? And I think we're, you know, 
I, I, I think that right now you might get more hate maybe for saying what you believe if it's unpopular, but I think that people are more comfortable, I guess, just making that sort of first order moral claims. If you go back and you watch the debates between Hillary and Trump, you know, Hillary is talking about how certain things are, are, are very important and all these, she, she's always talking in like person removed and Trump's just like, you're a liar. <laughs> and you know, in a game of just umpires, like if one team starts playing, they're going to win. Right. You know, and, yeah. and, and I think that, you know, no matter what you believe, like, just start, start advocating for it and see what happens. We don't know what's going to happen. And, and I think that everyone's kind of a wonk now. Like, everyone tries to pretend that they're Ezra Klein and that, like, uh, and, the, and they're just watching the polls and everyone talks about the polls and what the polls are doing. But, like, you're part of the poll. Like, you're part of the people that they're supposed to be polling. So just say what you think. Yeah. Well, the polls not, are the wonks. Not everybody has to be correct. a wonk. Yeah. But I mean, after 2016, we know that the wonks and the polls are reliable. So why shouldn't right, they should all become a... Yeah, because there's like the, the, the wonks are studying the people making the actual... It's, it's like trying to have a cult up entirely of anthropologists. It's like, you know, everyone is sort of once removed from their own culture. It's like, just do it. Just, just say what you think and just make the arguments and try and do stuff and... If you fail, you fail, whatever. But like, you know, I, I think that part, part of political progression was getting very frustrated with, you know, like the, like the lack of actually saying what I think and, and, yeah. and, 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 and other people, you know, being sort of super cagey about what they think. And so, you know, if you have beliefs, you should just say them and see what happens. Yeah. I feel like that has actually come into American comedy in a way that a lot of yeah. comedy has always, always been very political, but in the last, I mean, four years at least, maybe a little longer, it seems like it's become more about making a point and getting um, a political message across right, where right. the comedian is maybe going for applause more than laughter. I wonder if you've encountered that or what that yeah. experience is like. Oh, if you go to a lot of rooms, uh, sort of alt rooms where they're very political and they have like rules about what you can say and can't say and stuff, um, there's not like a lot of laughter. Um, <laughs> and, or like, you know, like the Daily Show, if People are sort of uh, supposed to be clapping and you're supposed to say, my rule is that uh, everything you say on stage has to, uh, has to like also be a joke. So like it can, it can be, you know, you're obviously using humor to process reality, which is part of what comedy is. And you're, you're making, uh, you know, like, like you're telling stories. So obviously your, your views go into it. It's you. Um, but when it comes to actually going to a comedy show and hearing what the person has, nobody wants that. Like, you know, we've had a lot of fun here tonight, guys. <laughs> What's not fun is <laughs> the situation in <laughs> Alabama. I don't even know if something's going on in Alabama. Yeah. But like, Googling, there's you know, always the something going on. Right. <laughs> yeah, like you guys hear the news, you know, and, and so I, I think that there is this, uh, there's, that there's a frustration that people have with the kind of, um, uh, comedy where some which is like you know very preachy at the same time every single artist also has viewpoints and so you know sometimes like i'll say something that i think on twitter and i'll just like you know make a point that i think is a good point and it's true and someone underneath it is like stick to comedy and i'm like <laughs> yeah but like i'm not on stage right now i'm just right. a dude <laughs> like you know i'm i'm sitting on the couch say what I think about like a law so uh you know I, I but but I think that when when you go to a comedy show you definitely want it to be um uh on on but but, but at the same time I I don't think that um I think I think when I first started out comedy it really was about taking my perspective and taking my beliefs and then somehow trying to make them funny um so that they would go down and th that I think is is really dangerous you know because there's some things that you think are funny that don't, you know, communicate your true beliefs. You just think they're funny. Uh -huh. And I think that comedy in general is about humbling, humbling people and showing the foibles and the, like the, the failures of our understandings and the failures of our plans. And so when you uh, are doing comedy, you want to really focus on that no matter what position it, it supposedly supports. You know, I have, I have lots of jokes where, um that they're like about a certain topic and then afterwards i'll have somebody come up and be like you know i totally agree with you that what they say after that is not at all 
and then, and then the next person, Muslim. yeah, and then the next person will say, right, oh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, they were, they were like, Sean King was like, we need to take down pictures of Jesus, because, and, uh, and so then that started a huge debate uh, about whether Jesus was white and stuff, and I, like, can we just compromise and say Jesus was a white Muslim? Like, <laughs> let's just compromise on that, you know? And I got all these comments, people saying like, no, he wasn't, that's apostasy. And I'm like, I didn't say, what? It was, I said compromise. Like, so it, it, it is, it is uh, like, you can always tell that someone's gonna say something stupid when they take a joke that you said and they say, so you're saying that. And then what, like, what comes next is never at all what you think. Because if I was thinking that, I would have just said it. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't have made a joke. It's like, uh, you know, like a joke is an art form. It's a, it's like a song or like a, uh, not to be pretentious, but it's like a poem, you know, and, and everybody interprets it like they're freshmen, like, uh, art uh, critics or like, right. you know, poetry, like, so Robert Frost has regrets. That's probably <laughs> what he was saying. That's probably what he was saying about those roads, you know, like, He's got some regrets in his life. That's about it. Like if he thought that he would have just said, I have regrets. Yeah. So, so, so for you, when you're on stage, well, what's, yeah. what do you like more when your audience is like cheering along with you or when they're like shocked and taken aback by something that you've said? I like it when people uh, laugh and then, um, and then they have like, like, like they'll laugh really hard and then they'll be like, no, no. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you already laughed. It doesn't count. You don't get to have an opinion, like, because what you're going for, and this is one of the problems with uh, sort of attempts to to replicate stand-up comedy uh, online, given the pandemic, is that we've uh, is is that what you want is you want to see the immediate reaction um, that people have because that's what you're going for, yeah. and you you don't want to have say something and then have them analyze it, and then. <laughs> Like, so what, what's great is when people laugh and they're like, no, no. And they have to like, and then they feel guilty for laughing. And so I, I don't know that that's that like, like, that's what I go for. If I say something though, and it gets claps and, and no laughs, then I, I, I've failed. Unless it's just my name. If, if <laughs> someone is introducing me, then that's great. I don't want them just to learn that and not clap. So. Or if you announce your, your religion, maybe. Right. Class, yeah. The word Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> or they might. They might. Yeah. They might clap because they're just glad I'm there. And they're like, "Yay, that's good. We'll work on you, though. We'll get you." Speaking of the pandemic, what's it like being a public performer during this? I know we. This was supposed to be our first, the ASP's first in-person convention, and I was yeah. really hoping that we could get you to come and perform live for us. It'd be awesome. Yeah. We're, of course. We're all meeting uh, on Zoom all day now, and and yep. doing this interview online. So what's it been like? Yeah, I mean, trying to make your money and support your family with this situation. Yeah, you know, um, well, we have some savings and like, you know, I'm technically a small business. And so I've gotten okay. some, uh, some assistance from the government as far as that's concerned. I also have a Patreon. Do you have that live home with you that are getting out of Yeah, phone? yeah. <laughs> I also have a Patreon that people have supported and stuff. But in terms of live shows, I have no idea when those are going to come back for me. I um, think that, uh, so I mean, it's, it's been, you know, several months since I've had like a live yeah. a live show um and you know I, i've i've done stuff online and and uh but in terms of like a live show i think that like live comedy is really only really going to come back once there's a vaccine um because you're trying to get it's i mean i probably picked a bad profession you know because it relies on people getting together in a tight space and then expelling air out of their mouths next to each other and uh, and that's not a good, that's like the worst possible combination for the, for the coronavirus. So I think, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a while before like we can really make things back to normal or whatever normal means. Yeah. Did you see the Chappelle thing? And what did you think of like trying to do outdoor amphitheater? I did, yeah. Parts? I thought, it, I thought it was awesome. Uh, yeah. I think, I think it was cool. I mean, there's been some outdoor stuff that we've done, um, in, you know, where I live Charleston, but you know, my, like my bread and butter was like traveling all around and, going yeah. to places that I've been before. And like, that's, I, I'm getting a little antsy, you know, I, I, I travel a lot and uh, it's, I, I've, I have realized how much I love that, how ironically the constant traveling was a, like, was kind of monastic, had a kind oh, yeah. of rhythm 
rhythm to my life. And like, I've, I've heard uh, people say that about trucking, you know, I've heard like truckers who are Catholic say that it feels like being a monk where they're just, you know, uh, they're just gone for so long or like, and then they come back home and uh, I, I, I miss that rhythm. And so instead, instead of me being gone for like three days and then coming home and being a dad and then being gone, and instead of that, it's like every day, every single day. And uh, that's been a big change. And I feel bad complaining about it. I'm like, I got to see my kids every day now. But it's true. Like, it's a very different way of being than I've, uh, th th like, like, that I'm used to. Uh -huh. So we were wondering, um, just hypothetically, if you're going to roast the American Solidarity Party or our presidential candidate, Brian Carroll, is there anything that would come to mind that you would... Uh, shoot at us? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, the Libertarian Party, when I when I performed there, I was a little bit worried that, um, you know, people would find out that I had performed at the Libertarian Convention, and then they were like, what do you, you know, what are your opinions about, you know, this stuff? Um, I'm not worried about this, because nobody has any idea what the American Solidarity <laughs> Party is. <laughs> so, so, like, you have to have heard to get me canceled, right, um, yeah. about that. <laughs> Um, I do worry that the nominee is too young. Um, he's, he's, he's 70 years old and, uh, that's, that's younger than Trump and Biden, um, by like eight, nine years. So I don't think we need some like young whippersnapper millennial guy, uh, you know, like taking the white house yet. We're not ready for our first millennial millennial president yet. So, uh, yeah. Speaking of Trump, he was a yeah. game show host before he became president, but he seems to have transitioned right. into a second career as an insult comic. What do you think of Trump from a comedic point of view? I think he's great. Um, yeah. I think he's got a he's got a great rhythm. If you watch his uh, <laughs> his his, and th that's what I think. I mean, this like I just mean he's not he shouldn't be the president, right? <laughs> um, but he has a uh, a way of talking um, that's very much like comedians who sit around and. Right just say stuff right like we uh like when i and i have to be careful around non-comedians because um even just like 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 my wife you know like um i can sit around with a non-comedian or with a fellow comedian and we can riff on like you know on uh what about the pandemic and uh like what if our families died right just really dark stuff we can go down these roads and just say the most outlandish stuff. And we're like, well, you know, it would be sad that they died, but then, you know, like I, I'd, I'd be able to travel again. And like, you know, like, like that kind of like weird, I mean, that, that's the kind of stuff that you would be able to say. Um, I can't say that around comedian, even though I did just say it. Like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the kind of like, like that sort of riffing is the, is the bread and butter of just, like we're just gonna throw stuff out there and see what sticks. Trump does that. But it's like he's the president and he's doing that about like the treatments for coronavirus. Yeah. You know? yeah the, the Prime Minister of North like, Korea. <laughs> right. Like that's not that's not what the president should do, right? And <laughs> if if everyone just understood it, like, oh, he's riffing, you know, and like when he does his rallies, like it's he's doing he's working out material, he's doing crowd work. And uh, you know, for me at like open mics, that's what you do. You say all this stuff and it's one reason why we don't allow people to film during open mics is because yes. like, it's just, it's just garbage that we're saying. And then, you know, maybe eventually like we'll accidentally say something good and people will laugh and we'll be like, Oh, that was funny. Okay. And then we'll write it down. You know, uh, he does that, but instead it's like, it's not what's funny. It's just what's true. He'll just like huh. say stuff. And then people are like, that's right. He's like, Oh, that was right. And then he'll, <laughs> he's just, he's just, you know, cursed to, yeah. He, he, he also always sounds like he's lying. Um, he's like a used car salesman, you know, where he's, you can sort of smell the desperation on him or whatever. So like, he'll say stuff that sounds like there's no way that's true. And then it, it'll turn out to be true like three days later. And then you're like, okay, but he, he's cursed then. He's like some, somebody put a hex on him where he, he's cursed to accidentally say the truth. Yeah. He thought he was lying. He thought he was deceiving us, but he accidentally said exactly, something. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's all, yeah, it's not planned at all.
Well, you say it's not appropriate for a president to be a comedian, but actually Ukraine and Guatemala have both elected. That's right. The whole Ukraine gate thing, like yeah. that was the best part was that the guy was a comic <laughs> well, before I mean, he became. A question. So like if the ASP were to nominate you for our 2024 presidential candidate, would you accept? And I, I would absolutely accept. And I would promise that if, if I won, that I would do they accused Smith of doing uh, you know, a hundred years ago, which is building a tunnel uh, between the White House and the Vatican, right? Al Smith, the first <laughs> Catholic to run for president and freaked out and the Klan had all these pictures and it was Al Smith and it was like, you yeah. know, where he was gonna, he was gonna build a tunnel between the Vatican and the White House. And so I would, but I would do that. It would be, it would be absolutely real. So yeah, taking Jack Trick, Jack, <laughs> Chick tracks as your playbook. That's right. That's right. And that would be my, that would be my, uh, my campaign. It's just whatever Jack Chick, <laughs> Chick says, which is funny because like I'm a convert. And so I grew up with that as like yeah, right. real. And so I have to, every once in a while, I'm like, yeah, but you know, the Catholic church and then somebody will be like, that's actually not true. And I'm like, oh, okay. I thought it was true, but just good now. So <laughs> I'm, I'm still discovering things that are not, that is not true about the Catholic church. And I'm like, oh, okay. I was just, I thought it was propaganda. I thought I was just supposed to be all right with it now. Okay. So, so you, you mentioned about Twitter. You, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, so what, one thing that is really interesting um, about you that we mentioned earlier, um, your, uh, people are familiar with your work will know that you have a very large um, fan base in, in, in Pakistan and also uh, more internationally, a large Muslim fan base. Uh, how did right. that happen? Uh, so before I became a comedian, I worked with people with intellectual disabilities, um, and part of that was living in a community called Larsh, um, which is more well known in Catholic circles. But you know, I, I've worked in a bunch of cities and for a big variety of, of organizations. And I had uh, clients during that time who were Muslim, and uh, one in particular who was who was, uh, who was Pakistani. And when you know, as, as the caregiver, it's, it was it was my job to like help him be a good Muslim which is a weird relationship to have with someone when you're not, when you're not Muslim, right? And, 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 and Muslims do that with us too, where it's like, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll like, you know, it's their job to take us to church and stuff. Like if, you know, if somebody's, if, if they're the caregiver of someone with a disability. Right, right. And so you have to learn a lot and you have to, uh, you know, be able to accommodate and, uh, you know, anyway, in comedy, I was talking about those experiences and, uh, sort of went viral online, and then I got invited to uh, to do some comedy for Muslim organizations. And then, like people liked that I was clean and that I was, uh, you know, I was like fairly traditional in terms of my uh, my comedy, and that I was uh, not a fan of U.S. foreign policy. That's always a big plus uh, <laughs> there. So I think that um, you know it, it's it sort of it, it it happened organically. And then when I look back, I'm like. Oh yeah, that is kind of weird that I'm like the only Christian comedian who does comedy for Muslim organizations, and like you know, it's it's uh, I, I have to sort of remind myself every once in a while that it's not it's, that the people don't do this, but um, but no, I've done tours of Pakistan, and it's uh, it's really great. There's a big rumor in Pakistan that I'm Imran Khan's son. It's the prime minister, uh, <laughs> and I accidentally started that rumor myself, and like a bunch of people believed it, and so that's a big that's a big thing there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I love it and uh, it's a lot of fun. I also think that um, the same questions that a lot of Catholics, uh, historically, maybe not the best of relations between Catholics and Muslims. Uh, and, but um, I, I think that um, what's interesting is that right now, uh, Catholics and Muslims um, who are trying to hold on to their faiths uh, within I don't know, modernity, whatever, are asking a lot of the exact same questions um, about the way things are going and the way, uh, you know, different opportunities, but also challenges and asking the exact same questions and, um, but aren't talking to each other. And so uh, that's, that's one thing that I've, that I've found and that I've uh, found very helpful. Uh, and also like just being around Muslims a lot uh, is one of the reasons why I became Catholic um, because I saw in the Muslims that I knew a, uh, a way of life that, um, and I was like, wait, why is, why was I not brought up, you know, like that? And then it was like, oh, the Reformation. <laughs> I mean, just, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get into like too much, but like, that, that like, I, I do think that, uh, that 
there's like, at least for me, spiritually has been a very helpful kind of um, non-liberal, I don't know how to say that, but like non-liberal uh, interfaith dialogue that I've had um, that's been pretty unique and, and uh, that's been at, at least helpful for me. So what, yeah, like what similarities do you see between either the kind of spiritual and religious aspects of the Muslims, you know, or maybe the social and political aspects and Catholicism? That's interesting. Well, I think that, um, you know, ca Catholics and Muslims both struggle to, you know, we have, uh, we, we, we have faiths that, I mean, that like we can go through and be like, here's the thing that's similar within the face about, you know, but I think that the more, the more interesting question is we both have faiths that are, that are older than the French revolution. Um, and uh, <laughs> that is, uh, that's a challenge um, to sort of, do we figure out um, how to be, uh, how to take this pre-modern faith and, um, you know, w without having it, sort of lumped into the two party system. And so there's, and obviously there's, there's different uh, approaches, you know, I, I think a lot of, um, a lot of Muslims right now go to the Democratic Party, um, which is a new thing they didn't used to. Uh, they voted overwhelmingly for Bush the first time. Um, and then 2000, the war in Iraq happened. They're like, nope. Uh, and, um, but, but that's, you know, so, yeah, so the Democrats are sort of their protectors and they go to the Democrats for a lot of those reasons and for a lot of economic reasons and for, you know, like attention to social justice and um, like sort of suspicion of like un the unfettered free market. And uh, I, I think that um, for, for a lot of Christians, we've had a similar dynamic um, with the Republican Party where um, more traditionalists uh, have leaned towards the Republican Party uh, recently and seeing them as sort of like the protectors where, oh, Trump's gonna get the right judges in and then the judges are gonna do this and they're not gonna do that. But like, uh, you know, and so I think there's a similar dynamic going on uh, with that. But also like, you know, we, we have a very unusual thing going on right now where like, for example, if you know someone's opinion on guns, you probably also know their opinion on which like doesn't make sense like that's not those two aren't connected there's no reason why you should be able to predict but because of the two-party system and because of the way that you know camps happen and you, you know you end up with these affinity people and then you listen to their arguments and stuff people end up with these lumped up you know these like bundled political opinions that don't hold together that aren't like holistic um and i think uh christianity and islam both have a holistic view of the world that is um, very challenging to uh, the sort of um, non-holistic way that, uh, that, that modern politics um, tries to carve people up. And, and so, um, yeah, yeah, so I, and, and I think that, you know, um, it's, it's, it's not as simple as uh, legislating your faith or keeping it separate. I think that um, there's a very long tradition of how to do that to, uh, be you know political because we are political animals and it's 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 not an option to opt out of politics um, or to opt out of 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 the system because that's who we are as human beings. Um, so, but yeah, I I, I I think that both traditions have a very long conversation amongst themselves and in between the traditions about how to do that, about how to uh, live in harmony with each other and with the world um, uh, in a, in a way that's helpful. Um, that I don't see those kind of questions being asked on the national stage. Sure. Well, that's a great answer. Patrick, did you I, have anything um, else that you wanted to ask? Jordan? Well, I, I think we are probably going to have to wrap things up, but um, cool. I, uh, I'm really glad Jeremy could be here with us. Uh, I hope we'll see him again, um, maybe even yeah. sometime before his 2024 campaign, if we don't lose that's him. That's right. Um, but uh, yeah, I really uh, thank you for coming on with us and uh, have a good night, guys. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, have a good night. Jeremy, did you have anything you wanted to plug before we oh, yeah. sign yeah. off? Oh, um, no, just look me up, Jeremy McClellan, and, uh, you know, like, subscribe, with all, all, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, Jeremy's yeah, great any, on Twitter. Yeah, if you want to reach in, out to me for anything else, just let me know. All right, thanks, Jeremy. All right, thanks.